Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel, Mason African Motives, uh, still working on Engineering Science N3. So in this platform, uh, we shall work on the question paper which was actually written in March 2016, uh, March April exams uh, for 2016. So we just want to see how we are supposed to answer these questions. So the first question on 4.1, uh, we had to distinguish between static friction and kinetic friction. All right, so as as usual uh, i just have these so that we do not run away from what you're supposed to have so distinguish uh, between static and kinetic friction so static friction it opposes the initial movement uh, that is the force required to just move a body is called the static uh, friction force okay then kinetic friction as you can see there's now movement there so it opposes the force causing the movement so take note here the uh, the force that is causing movement because kinetic has to do with movement after the body is in motion so those are the two uh things that we had for the first part that is to distinguish so you can just have any uh, from this part okay then the 4.2 name two applications of friction what are the applications of uh, friction so there are so many applications that we have, but we just need two. So applications of friction. We have got uh, braking pads of vehicles, trains, lifts, aircraft, a clutch engagement to transmit torque and power uh, for drilling, for cutting, for turning, made possible by friction because cutting surfaces uh, between cutting surfaces and material. So these are the ones that we can give the as applications of friction, just any two of your choice there all right then um on question 4.3 are given a diagram there the weight of an object in fig six below is 2500 all right so which means we are given the weight which is 2500 let's just write it here 2500 so that we we'll need it newtons the object is placed on an inclined plane that forms an angle of 20 degrees which is this one to the horizontal the coefficient of friction we are given the coefficient of friction so as you can see there's a force p which is pushing this object to go this direction so definitely there's going to be a force that is going to oppose which will be in the other direction so the question is now um what is the question here let's take down our question calculate the following the pushing force p required to push the object upwards take note upwards there against the slope all right so previously we talked about this uh, typical type of equation where i told you guys that uh, whenever you're given such, uh, such type let me just redraw uh, to make this diagram a little bit bigger uh, because that one is too small for the adjustments that i want to do here because you're supposed to do some adjustments so let me just redraw this as it is that's 20 there and we are given something like this all right so this is what we are having something like this and this is the force p which is pushing the object up and we've got an angle of uh, 30 degrees here all right and this is we say it is 2500 newton all right so what is going to happen uh remember guys for for you to calculate because you are given the coefficient of friction so you actually know that uh the coefficient of friction has got a relationship between the frictional force and the normal force which is the weight component uh which you can just write it as n or you can write it as w no matter the way that you need uh, but this one you're just referring to something that is perpendicular okay then the frictional force all right so according to this diagram we need to know where we are going to have our frictional force and that weight component all right so this is what is going to happen remember the here because you're given this angle you're going to have a right angle triangle like this so this is going to face this direction and this is going to be going this direction like this and we know that's 90 degrees so as you can see this is opposite and i told you guys from your soccer tour anything that has to do with opposite has to use sine so this one is going to be p sine theta which is sine 30 degrees all right that's p sorry for that let me just try and adjust this side i don't know what's happening here all right 
And then this one is the adjacent. Anything that has to do with adjacent is to apply cos. So this one is going to be P cos 30 degrees like that. All right. Taking this now to this point, remember what I told you guys, you're going to have also a triangle, which is going to be drawn like this from this point and this angle is going to be transferred of 20 degrees to this point but this one is going to be affected by 2500 which is w that is a mg not the one that you are talking about the one that you're going to use on your freaking you know, the one from mass times the gravitational acceleration so as you can see guys uh, this is the adjacent so adjacent anything that is adjacent has to take course just like this adjacent this is now your adjacent so this one is going to carry course but course 20 but it, this is now 2500 so it's going to be 2500 course 20 degrees okay this is your opposite anything that is opposite is to carry sine so it's going to be 2500 sine 20 degrees all right then let's indicate our direction since these are from the weight uh, from the this body that you are given it's going to be facing because uh, due to gravity it's going to face downwards and due to the friction that is going to happen because we are pushing this going that direction so this one is going to be going this way like this all right so this is where your arrows are going to be pointing like this all right now that's our diagram now let's find what we need here all right uh since we are pushing upwards i told you guys when you are pushing you're, you're getting this this direction upwards so definitely there's going to be a frictional force which is going to oppose frictional force always opposes what you have so you're going to have a frictional force like this which is going to oppose this time it's going to be like this which is uh, opposing the movement uh, of the object to go upwards it's supposed to go upwards due to the applied force whatever that you're going to have but now it's going to oppose so what is going to be our frictional force so as you can see frictional force has to do with uh, something that is this parallel to the to the component as you can see this uh this is going this direction and this is going this direction so these together they can give us the frictional but this is going this direction which is to the positive and this is going this direction look at the arrow this direction which is to the negative so that means we are going to subtract this from p cos that so okay let's just write it aside guys it's now dirty there so the frictional force is going to be the difference between these two because they are the ones which are in line with the frictional force so you're going to subtract p cos that minus this 2500 okay so it's p cos 30 degrees minus this one which is opposing to this direction which is a negative 2500 so it's going to be 2500 sine 30 degrees uh, sine 20 degrees sorry then you can at least simplify this um using your calculator that's cos 30 which is 0, 0.8 so it's going to be 0, 0.8 not 8 0, 0.8 p minus 2500 sine 20 which is going to give us 855 that's 855 comma 050 okay but this zero does not have effect you can just leave it like this all right so this is our frictional component we just leave it aside in newtons like that okay so we are done with the first part we move on to the other part so that that is going to apply or that you are going to use which is to find the n which is the normal reaction or you can just write it as w or whatever way that you can just have it or f perpendicular which is the ones that are perpendicular to the plane um if you are to cross check here we are talking about these two forces from p p sine theta this one which is going downwards and this 2500 cos theta which are going down opposite we are talking about perpendicular to the plane so these ones they are all facing downwards they are negative forces and they are facing downwards all of them so there is no need for us to apply the negative or positive thing we're just going to add because they're all in the same direction just like if the forces are like this 
they are going in the same direction you just add them so it's the same thing you add them but if one is facing upwards like this and the other one is facing downwards you are going to subtract this one minus this one just like what these two are doing this one is facing this direction this one is facing that direction that is why we have to do subtract but these ones they are all in the same direction so you add them together all right so let's add them together so our n in this case is going to be p sine 30 plus 2500 cos 20 so it's p sine 30 degrees plus 2500 so there's no need of you writing a negative there cos 20 degrees something like that all right now that the stage that we are we can do the same thing just like what we did here sine 30 which is 0, 0,5 so it's 0, 0,5 p then you combine these two you're going to be left with plus 2349 yeah, that's 2349 comma 232 all right so everything here that's our n so we got the frictional component now let's go back to the formula that we wrote previously we said coefficient of friction is equal to the frictional force over the normal reaction so we have got the coefficient of friction we are given guys the coefficient of friction is 0, 0,4 we are given here coefficient of friction remember guys is 0, 0,4 so that is the one that you're going to take there. So 0, 0,4 is equal to, you now substitute the ones that you calculated here. You just substitute as it is 0, 0,866p minus 855, is it 55 five guys? Yes, 050. Zero zero. Or you can just leave it like a 5. Uh, there's no need of you writing a 0 over the normal reaction, which is this one, 0, 0,5. Uh, P plus two three four nine uh, comma two three two like that. All right, so that's what you are having. Then we can at least apply our um, skills here of calculating guys from your mathematical skills. You know of cross multiplication because we are given a fraction, so we're going to cross multiply this and this. So this zero comma four is going to multiply this zero comma four also multiplies this. Okay, so multiply by zero comma four you are going to obtain 0, 0,2p 0, 0,4 times this one you multiply by 0, 0,4 you are going to obtain plus 9396928 which is equal to this one times one it is going to remain as it is any number times one guys remains as it is all right so this is what you're going to have then um what are you going to do? Collect like terms, definitely. Let's just collect our terms, the terms with P. So this is the smaller one. You can take it this side. So you're going to be left with 939,6928. Transpose this negative is going to be a plus 855,05, which is equal to, we transpose this. So we have taken this to this side. It's going to be a positive, And this to this side is going to be a negative because it was a positive before. So now it will be a negative. So, but we had 0, 0,866p, which was already there. Then if you take this to the other side of the equation, it will be a minus 0, 0,2p, like that. All right. So that means someone can play around with calculator here to add so that the pair, you can obtain something like 1794,748. Yeah, which is equal to you subtract this which is going to give you 0, 0,666p yeah that's 0, 0,666p like that so it find p definitely one is to divide by 0, 0,666 0, 0,666 there so you're going to divide this so therefore our p is going to be if you divide you are going to obtain two two six nine four yeah that's two six nine four comma it's going to be comma eight zero nine zero zero nine something like that so the two three decimal places is going to be eight zero nine so this is going to be the value of p that you're going to have which is in newtons suppose the other one so it's just going to be uh newtons let me oh sorry guys let me adjust like that okay so it's going to be two six nine two six nine four 
comma eight zero nine. Yeah, someone can write it as what? You can round off to two decimal places if you want. Yeah, you can just write like p is equal to two six nine four comma eight one newton. So depending with the degree of accuracy that you are given. So it can be eight one or it can be eight zero nine. It depends with what you want, guys. But that's what we had there. Then the other question was um the angle in degrees, take note guys, the angle in degrees that the plane must be raised so that the body will slide down by itself. The angle that is in degrees that is going to slide down by itself, which is uh, uh, the angle of uh, friction there that is the one that you write like this is 4.32, 4.32. So we know that tan uh, phi is equal to the coefficient of friction like this from tan phi so to find phi which is the angle of friction there we are going to have arctan okay so that means it's going to be arctan the 0 comma 4 because we're given guys the coefficient of friction is 0 comma 4 so arctan 0 comma 4 in degrees is going to be 21 comma eight zero four zero something like that all right so you can just round off to this one to one decimal place which is going to be uh 21 comma 8 so that will be your phi which is the angle in degrees that the plane must be raised so that the body will slide down by itself so that's how they ask these questions guys so we just need to work on more questions and revision more question papers so that you'll be able to understand and answer these typical questions but for now that's it guys for me on african motives till we meet again